All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is a new format we're trying out. Um, I think it might be a Patreon exclusive, but that's not set in stone yet. All right, um, we've got Billy here today. I'm here today. All right, good for you. You know what? I'm here too. Nobody cares about me being here. Yeah, sorry. Shit. All right, <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, today we're just, uh, we're kind of fucking around. So this um, is just going to be like uh, us like talking about music news. And it's like, it's not going to be constrained by our normal format of like 10 million uh, listens or less. We can talk about whatever. Um, new music releases. Um, yeah, I think this, this is going to be about new music uh, specifically. And... Um, Taylor Swift, I know, has a new album out. Uh, I've listened to it. Um, how do you feel about Taylor Swift, Billy? Um, I, I think that I, I don't like, uh, you know, criticizing people too much, but um, or criticizing like uh, being too overtly like mean to people. Um, there's a lot of that shit on the internet. But I do have like feelings about her, just her music in general. It just feels very pandering, um, and I I do feel like, it, especially how she's been going about with her like new albums, um, she she has every reason to want to rebrand herself. And I can respect that. And I, I think that's really cool um, to do as an artist. You know, you have a lot of artists who just uh, who do not rebrand themselves and stay in the same comfort area for a long time. But uh, like I said, I, I do feel like sometimes it doesn't feel like a genuine like rebranding. Um, and I'm sure you might have more to feel and say about that yourself but it just it feels like a pandering kind of rebrand like I'm doing I'm doing this to make money I'm not doing this because it's actually how I feel and I'm all about like artists writing for stuff from the art uh, from the heart and you know singing stuff from the heart and that makes it more special and that makes it more honest and raw when it comes from that place um i i just can't get into her music like that it i mean there there i think that she's just from the start it's the there's a lot of music that's just um like i don't know if you if you can like say where I'm coming from more, but there's just a lot of music that doesn't feel like I can get into it for that reason. Does that make right. sense? Well, yeah, uh, to an extent, I, I, well, I understand. I just, um, I feel like it's. I thought it was funny when you were like, uh, I feel like um, her, 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 uh, some rebranding is more like. Uh, uh, pandering than others rebranding is is a marketing uh concept it is like cynical and uh completely uh you know pandering regardless of uh how it's executed its intent is always going to be pandering it's gonna be like well what's this demographic we're not doing well with well let's try to reach out to them you know like look at miley cyrus for example her um her rebranding was like, okay, so I'm this uh, Disney teen sensation that people are no longer resonating with. How about I just take off my clothes and, and fuck around on a wrecking ball? And you know what? It worked. And uh, some of her recent music has actually been really good. And uh, I feel like her her vocals are even stronger than they used to be. So I, I don't know. I, I'm usually on board with rebranding as long as it's uh, as long as the end result is good, I think the ends justify the means, you know? Yeah, that 
that does that does make sense. And I mean, I I definitely yeah, I definitely am kind of conflicted with uh, how like you 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 definitely have her going through some a lot of. You definitely have her going through a lot of probably what Miley Cyrus was going through, so it's interesting to say that like a lot of talking down and a lot of judgment and a lot of people saying that she's not actually like an artist and someone to be respected in the music game. And you know, I, I'm thinking about the event with Kanye. There, there's actually like things that happened to her that like have shaped what she's been molded into as this new artist so it, it does make sense um for from that perspective of what her music has like come to um i i just guess that cynic that cynical side of me is just um when she's singing about like other stuff it just it just um feels less like it, it feels like that it it doesn't feel I I don't know it's probably not for my place to say but um, <laughs> what are you trying to say I really I, want to know honestly <laughs> I guess I'm what I'm trying to say is that she has those those songs that like come back to those events that happened to her life and she has those uh s songs that are alluding to being um not respected by men and in those relationships and yeah i feel i feel like there's a good way to s say those things and i th i i like that she's saying those things i'm and I like that she's owning herself and respecting herself. And I think that's important for people to see. I just think, like, maybe with the rebranding, it kind of overshadows the importance of those themes. And I think that, like, it's it's really important to be... Um, to be, like, loving yourself. But... Uh, just I can't take it as seriously when there's it when it feels more you're empowering yourself and then you're just kind of like being shitty to other people too I'd rather like just the empowerment itself but I mean this brings up a lot of like things if it was a man doing it would I feel any different? You know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I am going on a little bit. You, you, you do have a habit of that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I feel like you're bringing up a lot of stuff that has, you know, like, and this isn't to, um, this isn't to trivialize it, but a lot of, um, you know, what you're bringing up happened like a decade ago. Uh, like the the um, the the Kanye uh, incident, the uh, the feud uh, with um, Katy Perry, but I mean, I feel like all um, I don't know about Kanye. I feel like the Kanye thing might have been legit, but I feel like the Katy Perry thing was one of those uh, music producer things where they're like, "We're going to drum up sales for both of you, uh, and you're both going to get hit singles out of this." And, and they did. And I feel like I, I really would like to know when you consider her rebranding to be uh, taking place because um, I feel like her branding rebranding really took place around that time, like a decade ago, because um, before then she was just this sweet, in innocent little, you know, uh, con country singer who was, was still a singer songwriter and uh, still you know wrote a lot of her own music I, I think I could be wrong about that um, 
I'm just now realizing a lot of the stuff I know about Taylor Swift, I got secondhand from mom after she watched a, a documentary on Taylor Swift. I'm 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 totally serious. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it was effective. But yeah, I, I I think that's part of what feels disingenuous to me is I wish I I'd like for her to be writing her own music again. Like she's a talented artist. She she's obviously shown that and i think that like this rebranding was is part of her for sure but is definitely that marketing ploy like we've said um um and i think that this kind of started at that point for sure um and definitely not on this album like it what it didn't start but it started before this album is what i would say or what i don't know when that one released um i can't pull up my wait my trusty what? internet the album before this one oh um i want to say the taylor swift one yeah taylor swift. i can pull it up um I think her last album, I could be wrong, but it's looking like uh, Evermore. What was that? That was um, 2020. Oh. Uh, like she did a bunch of uh, like uh, remixes of her older stuff. Well, not remixes, but like... Uh, uh, Reproduction, reproductions, uh, remasters of her older stuff, like um, they're called Taylor's version. Like she did a Taylor's version of Red and Fearless. I'm, and, um, I might be wrong, but I'm not thinking of that one. I'm thinking. Are you thinking of uh, folklore? Yes, I, I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure. It would have been, I still have, but I've heard it's really good. All right, what were you saying? Um, I was just saying it would have been like. Um, in 2018 or 19. Um, are you thinking of, um, are you thinking of the one with Look What You Made Me Do? Yes. That was, uh, 2017. That was Reputation. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of the album. <laughs> Look What You Made okay. Me Do is really, is, is exactly what I'm kind of thinking of. Well, <laughs> it was... It was honestly kind of a shit posty album anyway. So, I mean, yeah, it, to me it's kind of cringe. I'm <laughs> Yeah. No, that's it's, fair. Like I that's exactly the kind of like and if you can find like a genuine like good like source for you making good music, I that's appreciative for me. I mean, I appreciate that and um, it's possible that that album was not the best, but the albums that are after it have been much better. Um, and that's good. Like, as long as she's used that to create better material, but that album was just kind of cringe for me. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um... All right, moving away from Taylor Swift, have you heard um, Jeff Rosenstock's new song? Uh, which one is that? It's called um, Razor Love. He did it with Laura Stevenson. No, um, I actually haven't. But I, I, she, they've done, they've done a couple of songs together before, haven't they? Yes, um, and they recently released, I think. It's an EP. It's called Younger Still. It just came out. Okay, I think I did see that, but I I didn't um I didn't uh, check it out yet. It, I I do like their stuff together. Uh, obviously, Jeff Rosenstock is great. I mean, do you want to hear it real quick? Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can pull it up. Let me see if I can bullshit this. No bullshit. No bullshit on this podcast. Yes, yeah, uh, not a lot. Serious. All right. 
we're serious boys talking about Taylor Swift. It's the Imagine dream. It's, it's what millennials are supposed to do. All right. Um, this is going to be Razor Love by uh, Jeff Rosenstock and Laura Stevenson. Now loading.
yeah, it's really uh, cute and really lighthearted and nice. I I uh, listen to Harvest Boon quite a bit with um, with both of them um, when they made that EP. I guess that was um, kind of made to um, made before this to kind of get hype for this, and I think that. That really sets that song sets the stage for this new energy of um, the both of these these two collaborating. It's it's really cool and it's it's nice that like I think this is definitely a passion project of his. Um, it's nice to have a different energy from what you're used to getting from him. Oh, I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm muted. Um, I I was talking the whole time, oh. as usual. While the song was going? No, no, no. Uh, I mean, like, uh, I was just interjecting with ye occasional yes, you know, like the, the usual talking to mom energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can just uh, sp uh, sp uh, splice those in. Yeah, I'll Great. splice in the yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I was uh, just going to... Uh, I was just agreeing with you, really. Um, yeah, I. It is a, a, a nice contrast, um, and I know some artists, uh, um, some artists, um, some listeners consider it, you know, like uh, or fans consider it selling out. If you're like, oh, you know, he's normally like this high energy like punk singer, but now he's doing like uh, pop songs for the ladies. That's he's selling out. He's selling <laughs> out. I mean, it's like, no, maybe he just likes doing, you know, romantic songs. Like, have you ever considered that? Yeah. It's, yeah. It doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be a scheme. Yeah. I, I really love No Dream and um, his other albums, but I, I, and there's so much to still, you know, be mad about, but I, I can understand like he, that doesn't have to be his image all the time. And if he's getting tired of, you know, making those kind of high energy songs like he it's you don't always have to you know do that like it, it sucks that people feel like they have to stick to a certain image just because they've branded themselves that way doesn't that just perfectly sum up the last five years though there's still so much to get mad about <laughs> yeah and I, I think that uh the album is just such a perfect summation of all of it, all of his like anger. Oh, there they went. Especially uh, Wait, can, politics. Can you not hear me? Oh no, I, it was the um. I'm the, the I, jockey up. Yeah, <laughs> I always <Okay>. just get <laughs> thrown off by them leaving. I know, and it, it happens every time, and, and the other bot does not pick it up, and I always think it's going to pick it up, and I'm going to have to edit out the sound when Jockey Bot leaves, but nope. Fuck Jockey Bot. Well, Jockey Bot gives us our music. We can't be mad at it. <laughs> Jockey Bot <laughs> is God. <laughs> yes. Then well, if we went into Jockey Bot, we would use something else, but uh, uh, no, I take it back. We love Jockey Bot. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we, we also should have did the same thing about Taylor Swift. Actually, and played a song of hers to evaluate it. Uh, you know what? I will pay, play you one of her new songs. Yeah. Um, but but first, can we talk about the um, the drum machine in that, and how drum machines have low key become associated with uh, like romantic pop music when they were total? That was totally not a thing. Like. Um, I don't. Well, I guess in a way it has been a thing for a long time, even since the '80s. Like it, uh, it's <laughs> it's funny. Um, the the two sides of the drum machine are um, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 two um, the two genders: uh, uh, old school hip hop and romantic pop music. The drum machine's come a long way. <laughs> Where else will it go? Stay tuned to find out. 
Well, and that's in the 80s. These days, I guess you could also throw in trap music and pretty much uh, most hip hop still relies on like 808s and 909s. Yeah, I it, it's just uh it, if it, it feels like if it and it's not like just there like really obviously, it really feels like it sets the the tone and the beat for everything really properly. So it is, it, it's just fun how creative you can get with music and your sounds. Absolutely. And these days, it's a click of a button, you know, and I can't even fathom. And, you know, like, I make, I make music, but I, I couldn't even fathom, like, 30, 40 years ago, having to do everything, like, manually. And, and I guess that's not true. I could figure it out. Like, as, as a millennial, I can do both. Uh, you know the you know how the meme goes. Yeah, but like I and I'm sure you know if I if I were alive and making music in the early '80s, I would have figured it out. Um, but uh, it's it's just like it's we take a lot for granted these days about how easy it is. Yeah, to just how- like go online and make an album. Yeah, how many sources like Bandcamp makes it so easy to put up stuff. Spotify has made it so easy to put up stuff. I mean, hey, we're on Spotify. Whoa. Um, but yeah, it and it I think it says something about like how uh, today, you know, as an artist, you can make something and have it up pretty quickly, but back then I mean, correct me if I'm wrong there was not as much it you usually would have to be more produced to be up like to be seen because of how how much it would go into you know you making music for today i think that's why we're seeing such a surge of like indie stuff because of how you know you you don't have to be that uh big produced like big produced classic rock very well-known band anymore you can just be a, a single guy making music and putting it up on Bandcamp. yeah the uh bedroom core yeah as the uh, as the kids call it yeah like you can make you can like do all the instruments yourself and get an album up in an hour if you really wanted to whereas in the past you had to like uh secure a deal uh, either you know with a distributor any kind of distributor and uh like uh book a recording studio go in you know yeah. like do the session and then get the tapes afterwards and you know pay the uh the booking studio now you can do all that shit for free like it's so yeah. fucking insane it's so cool too because you can start out as you, you can start out as like just doing it yourself it just being a fun little project and now you can make it make it big and you know start going to become like a big musician it, it's hard like it doesn't happen that often but we've seen it happen to people yeah yeah I mean look at, at fucking I don't I'm not a fan but look at Justin Bieber you know like he just yeah. he made uh he made a youtube video of him singing and a producer saw it and and signed him to a contract yeah or well, or if you a better a person that we both actually like look at bo burnham yeah yeah that's true yeah i mean he he started off from youtube videos too like it's it's crazy how far he's come and he actually makes good projects uh his, his last project's really fucking great. Everyone loved Inside, like, within reason. Like, if you go on Letterboxd, you'll see some really unhinged reviews for uh, for uh, Inside. And it's it's funny to read them and be like, I don't know what the fuck kind of drugs you're on, my dude. But yeah. <laughs> that's that's neither here nor there. Yeah, there's there's always going to be people who don't like something for whatever reason. That, that's fair. I... I just think it's such a good album that captures, or I guess it is an album, but also a, you know, performance thing that really captures 
what 2020 was like and that's going to be a um a thing that we'll always have to remember it by for better or worse yeah uh uh what's the term a uh time capsule yeah yeah just a little time capsule all right let me play that taylor swift song for you yeah this is i think it's it's the most listened to song off off her new album i don't know if it's um if it's actually good uh mm, that's not what i was gonna say i, I, I was gonna say I don't, I don't know if it's a hit single oh, but okay. i think it's, i think we'll call it the hit single off the album Uh, and I was just, I just had it and then I deleted it because I convinced myself that it was the wrong version and I don't think that's the case. All right. Here it is. This is, um, Antihero by Taylor Swift. Have you heard it yet? No. You have? No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. It sounded like you said, yeah. Okay. All right, well, here's the song. All right. the song what'd you think 
can we get uh can we just have like a nationwide uh a nationwide like news coverage of what an anti-hero is so that we can all be on the same page um uh, i think that definition would be really helpful to the public yeah are you saying that taylor swift doesn't know what an anti-hero is <laughs> i'm saying that taylor swift probably doesn't know what an anti-hero is but uh but other than that um it was it was pretty good it was it was fun and catchy and uh I, I i do like that um you know it does address some of the things i was actually talking about previously about the the brand from the other album that i had a problem with where it's like oh i'm hot shit and you know those people that diss me they can go to hell yeah. and i i'm you know the number one and it's like you know, I don't know how um, the other songs on the album might be, but I, I think that this is at least a nice, more introspective take on, you know, um, the things that happen in our lives can sometimes and very much will be, you know, our, our own fault. And it, it it's, you know, that's not to say that, like, there's tragedies that have happened in her life or my life that are my fault or her fault but i do think it's a very interesting uh more nuanced take that um that i can appreciate that she went in this direction for this for this song yeah i'm gonna tell you right now the entire album is like this and i really enjoyed it no, that's cool that's i well then all my criticism you can just edit it out then <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i won't <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess that is a problem of talking about something without listening to this album first. Um, but my criticism for the other previous album still stands. But Yeah, I mean, those are still things that happened, you know. Even, you know, growth, uh, you know, wouldn't be uh, as remarkable as it is if it didn't proceed, you know, uh, lack of growth, you know yeah i think like part of that rebranding is you know making some i don't want to say mistakes but making some choices that don't fit as well and you know sure. there there are the those choices that don't sit well with people and um you know at, at least you can say you tried i mean muse did what they wanted to do and everyone was pissy about it but you know, they obviously didn't want to continue making the music they'd made before for whatever reason. That's, yeah, um, that's their so choice. With Muse, yeah, with Muse specifically, I remember um, there was one guy in the band, I think it was the uh, the guitarist, I could be wrong, that really didn't like the, the cock rock stuff they were doing early on. And he was like, hey, can we, can we experiment? Can we do a little bit more, you know, like unconventional stuff and uh so they did madness which was their their uh um their notorious dubstep song and yeah uh subsequent album and he actually liked that I, that was like his favorite thing they did for a while and you know like i i'm one of those people that's like anything to keep the band together if there's a member that's like hey can we please do a Latvian folk album? And the rest of the band was like, eh. But then, you know, like, I'm totally fine with it. Like, if, if that's what keeps the band together, like, go for it. Fuck. You know, you, it's it's your thing. Do whatever the fuck you have to do. Yeah, and I'm sure there's people who still enjoy, uh, you know, I, I have to be honest, it's not my kind of thing, but there's people who still enjoy, um, that like muse after um after that change after that rebranding it it doesn't always have to appeal to you and why would you go on the internet and like tell people to kill themselves also like that's fucking crazy well because they're a total piece of shit those are the only people who do that are total pieces of shit let's be honest <laughs> 
anyone who goes on the internet and says kill yourself is a piece of shit. I don't <laughs> think that's a controversial uh, opinion. Well, how can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, I feel like it actually helped them because now if you go back and listen to some of uh, Muse's more recent stuff, they've got like a nice uh, tonal balance, I think. Yeah, um, it, it's kind of similar to this, like kind of situation where you know your first one's going to be a little rocky, but you know you'll get to that new sound that ever that you want and that everyone else would want eventually. Uh, in fact, would you be opposed to me like playing one of Muse's recent songs? <laughs> Why not? All right, we're we're doing it. Why not just lean into it? Is this, this is, uh, is this wubby or is this like? Uh, still uh, I, electronic, kind of? A little bit. Let me just play it for you. Okay. This is Muse's You Make Me Feel Like It's Halloween. Okay, but what is that, the actual song? I make you feel like it's Halloween, but what is the actual song, dude? That's what it's called. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a Halloween song. Oh, nice. Oh, we should have played it for our Halloween um, thing. I thought about it. You know what? It would have been in compliance because it's less than 10 million hits. <laughs> Nobody listens to Muse anymore. <laughs> well, it's... Uh, no, I mean, it's it's like 7.8. It's right on the cusp. But, you know, still in compliance. <laughs> you sound like my job. <laughs> That right. boy hell fix you out of few blinds. <laughs> I mean, just like you, I am a middle manager, so it sucks. Yeah, it sucks to suck, as Ronnie would say. Yeah, we're contributing to the problem. Yeah, we're a bunch of fucking assholes. All right, here's <laughs> uh, uh, here's Muse. All three people that are listening to this.
All right, how'd you feel about that? Um, I really dig that. That was a lot of fucking fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was good. I, I I would not have expected that from you. <laughs> um, I think I it does like it brings me to like I, I, there's something I was thinking about that might be beyond my scope of actual criticism, but. And it's not an actual bad thing, but um, I think listening to pop music is a lot different from listening to like the indie music or other like musics that I'll be listening to. Um, in that, like, um, you know, Muse or Taylor Swift, um, they're all like adopting and learning from other pop artists like we're listening to you know pop poppier music so i think it's it makes sense that um uh, it's interesting that muse has taken like the the modern kind of pop like synth resurgence and they've used it to their best ability and it sounds really good with their other sounds I think, like, despite this being, you know, a new muse, you can still hear aspects of their previous, like, sounds, and that being, like, mixed with the synths and everything is very interesting. I think Taylor Swift might have... It feels a little less, like, less... It feels a little bit more modern, like, generic... Um, and that's okay. Like it, she still was able to make it like her own, and it's it's still good. But I think that this is a little bit more. Th there's a lot of different sounds and inspirations here. I, even like with those like Oz, I felt like a little there was a little bit of like Queen in there, and that's that's very interesting. There's like that that modern uh, inspiration, and then there's those like th that Queen inspiration. What do you think? Yeah, um, I thought it was funny because I, for some reason, I thought you were going to use the word idiolect, and I was like, this is Billy, he's not going to use the word idiolect. Um, <laughs> What's idiolect mean? <laughs> I can learn something. <laughs> it's uh, um, speech habits um, that are um, reserved for a specific uh, group or person. Or uh, it can extend. It's um, it's really broader than that. That's like the textbook definition, but um, it's it's like um, this language that is uh, reserved to a specific identity, and that uh, certainly can pertain to music. Okay, I, I see where you're going now. At, at first, I was like. How, how the fuck does that pertain to this? But now I, I see what you're you're talking about. Well, uh, we're not going to get into prescriptivism versus uh, descriptivism because uh, GS isn't here, and uh, in this case, fuck him, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> on the record, <laughs> off the record, for the record, he's kind of an asshole. <laughs> Well, I think it's very evident in that one episode. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I feel like um, this song specifically does use some of the, the language of uh, what is expected for, like, a Halloween song. Um, like, specifically the, um, the organs in minor key. Um, you know, like the uh, the vocals are very theatrical, I, and I, I feel like that's to be expected at this point for uh, a, a major pop song doing a Halloween song. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't have a problem with that. I think it's it's very fun. It's executed very well. It's clear this was supposed to be a big hit, and it wasn't. But that's okay. Maybe it will be in five years. Who knows? You know. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see um, people, like, playing this, like, in stores and stuff, because 
we have the same Halloween music that we've had for 20 years. Kind of feels like that for Christmas music, too. I'd love to hear people make songs that aren't just fucking the same record or the recordings of like the same songs. Like, please fucking. What's that one yeah. Halloween? That what's that one Christmas song that's like uh, um, uh Ma- Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas." <laughs> yeah. Oh, that one, and then there's another one I was thinking of, the one that oh. I was we were in the bank and I was making fun of. Um, last Christmas I gave you my heart. <laughs> the very next day, <laughs> you <think laughs> <I went. laughs> <laughs> yeah, please give it to someone special. Like it's the whiniest song, but it's a George <laughs> Michael song, so it makes sense. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, Jesus Christ, there is no excuse for Christmas music either because. There are literally thousands of artists who have tried to cash in on the Christmas craze by making their own Christmas song, and yeah. they, they just never they just never took off. Just use some of those songs on your you know, whatever your uh, Macy's DJ playlist for Christmas music. Uh, instead, they'll just play Mariah Carey uh, five times over and over. And it's it's really a fucking annoyance. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, those those songs are already kind of like owned technically, kind of like how radio is with that t- kind of thing. Like they they don't have to pay any more money for those songs, from my understanding. Like they'd have to pay money to use the other songs. Well, there's always royalties they're gonna have to pay. Um. I don't know. I feel like there is a lot of great, like, Christmas adjacent music out there, like holiday music. I am going to play a song on our um, our holiday um, uh, episode for the, the, the podcast um, that I, I will not play on this. Um, okay, yeah. That is like a, a perfect Christmassy vibe, but without like the the Christmas you know invocation. Um, but yeah, like it doesn't have to be like Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, you know, to be a good Christmas song. Just yeah. you know, just th- throw in some sleigh bells and you know, throw in some ambient piano and you got yourself a christmas song really i think it says and i don't want to detract too much from music but i think it says a lot that some people's favorite movies and this is kind of a meme but it's like favorite christmas music movies is like die hard or uh like my favorite christmas movies gremlins and it's just it says it it says so much to me about christmas that sometimes you just want to get away from all the overt like like um positivity yeah and it, it, christmas is actually like a really fucking sad time sometimes you know there's plenty of people who i have a, plenty of work friends who you know know christmas as like anniversaries of parents like uh dying and there's plenty of people who have car crashes around at Christmas time because of how there is everyone is <laughs> there is a documented like surgence of car crashes and those kind of things that happen yeah. like Christmas isn't just all happiness you know now I will say there is a myth that suicides are the highest around Christmas time that is not true Suicides are the highest around March and April. Okay, that I will say for the record is a myth that that suicides are the highest around Christmas time. But you know, however, people are still fucking stressed around the holidays because they are trying to make more money to provide for their family. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you see a lot of people picking up overtime because of that expectation too. Um, it it is, you know, I I think that that marketing kind of positivity is a response to trying to keep people in the right mindset of buying and being happy for Christmas, and I think that's why sometimes. I will feel like, oh, this is just a scam. This is just, you know, you're just, you know, you're trying to manipulate me. And this is all just like kind of phony, you know, to. Yeah. So I think that's why those like other kinds of movies can be. And that's why that other kind of mindset can be more realistic and more appreciated, especially during that time. You don't. You don't always want to hear, like, all this, like, you know, people trying to sell me broken hearts, and then next Christmas I'm going to fuck Santa. Yeah. Last Christmas he gave me my heart. This Christmas I'm going to fuck Santa. Can we talk about how problematic Santa Baby is? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think everybody already knows. <laughs> well, oh, right, that's fair. <laughs> I think we already know how problematic Sansa Baby is. How problematic um, the other, the one with the. Uh, it's cold outside. Well, yeah, that's a given. But I think Santa Baby is kind of slept on for how problematic it. For about, yeah, how problematic it is. Well, I, I think that's a natural case of problematicness when you are taking songs that were created in what, like the 50s, like 60s, yeah. like th- these are all songs that were, you know, created with not with uh, people, you know, not having the same rights as other people and the trying to sell to certain people the idea of Christmas and um, like I think that that's just the natural kind of problem you're going to run into when we're still taking songs that were you know made at those times like (laughs) we need to fucking move on yeah um, I mean that's I guess that's true to an extent um I don't think there's much problematic with Jingle Bells. Yeah. But I would like to move on from at least like Santa Baby or um, It's Cold Outside. I mean, people... Yeah. People expect those to not really be playing, but they're being played everywhere. I am currently working on a, um, a... A horror parody of It's Cold Outside called I'm Dead Inside. (laughs) Don't uh, advertise it too much. It's getting stolen soon. Shit, you're right. No, Uh, but it's it's already happening. So it's like, yeah, go ahead, you know. Yeah. Um, All right, so this next song is um, just a gorilla song. But, uh, are you ready to hear the new Gorillaz song? Okay, <laughs> you were you've been re- we've been waiting for this. Oh, <laughs> well, it's just like we're you know we're close to wrapping up. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. keep this short. Okay, that's, um, that's fair. All right, this is um, the new single by uh, Gorillaz. I believe it dropped today, or was it yesterday? It was uh, today. All right, let's listen to it. Let's get it out there. Okay. This is uh, this is Baby Queen by Gorillaz. Uh, oh, can I just say, um, I yeah. I laughed during the Taylor Swift or the Taylor Swift song because it was so fucking funny when all uh, what she said about all the babies. <laughs> just, I mean, I, I I know it wasn't probably supposed to be taken, but. The way I took it, <laughs> she just was like, she said like that shit about the the babies that she loves them or something. Well, yeah. I mean, also, 
let me just quickly define for everyone uh, an anti-hero is a main character in a story or uh, uh, who may lack convection, conventional hero, heroic qualities and attributes such as idealism, courage, and morality that is the textbook definition of anti-hero alright but now uh, we're gonna play Baby Queen by Gorillaz and uh, I have not heard this song yet. So we're both going to be going in blind on this one. Oh, damn. Yeah. That was Queen Baby by Gorillaz. What's the deal, Billy? You think this is what uh, Sandman listens to while he's uh, chilling? I really hope so, because it's a pretty chill track, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. I, I I do feel like... And I, it's not just this song. I There's nothing that really has like that spark of... I would listen to this like so much... like fucking every day um but this is a very very good fun song um and that's just i guess that's the whole motive of 
pop is just easy, accessible, and you know, pre- and at least uh, entertaining enough that you would just be able to revisit it and you know have those like fun associations with it. Sure. Yeah, but I um, I'm definitely on board with like just songs that you can just vibe to without it being like a whole you know thing like with like uh, advanced uh, production with like uh, string sections and guitar sections and bass sections like you you can just put out a chill track these days and people will be on board with it if you're uh, if it feels genuine and I feel like this does even though it's coming from gorillas (laughs) yeah definitely I, I do like how just how easygoing it is and how it it, it doesn't uh, something like I will get into the habit of just listening to on repeat is like you know like cursive or something where they just always have an escalation and I do like that this just has that one vibe throughout this entire song like I'm very used to hearing like a song grow from being slow paced to, you know, having that bridge or something that like it grows into being louder or something. So it is nice to have that slow vibe. Yeah. Do you really feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. I mean, I, there is plenty of artists that I do listen to that I think are emblematic of that. Like, uh, Shaky Graves, I think, is really pr- good at that. Uh, sure. He, some of his, and some of his music, even though it has that energy of uh, being slow paced throughout the song, like, I could still, um, that was like, he did have a song where I could just like listen to it every day. Let me see which one it was from his newest album. I mean, though, that can be new, always changes, but. Um, Can't Wake Up is the album. There's so many good songs on this album and not all of them capture that um that energy but of some of them do like escalate but climb on the cross is just such a good song i love that song i listen to that like song pretty much every day for a good month yeah i mean i i I didn't. It's not that I didn't believe you. <laughs> it's not, sorry. I I just think it's it's interesting that I do have a vibe that I'm used to and that I very much go to, especially for something that I listen to every day. Um, if I do, if it does like catch me in in the way that I I just you know gravitate towards that song so much that I'll listen to it so much for a time. But usually it wouldn't be a slower paced song. So I do think it's interesting that an artist like that like can happen, but it just it it doesn't happen as often. Sure. I mean, um is it okay if I tell a joke? Yeah. Alright, um Billy, Billy, the other day I was going down on my girlfriend. I said to her, geez, you got a big pussy. Jeez, you got a big pussy. She said, why did you say that twice? I said, I didn't. See, because of the echo. All right, this is Big Pussy by Brockhampton. You see what I did there? That was uh, uh, a reference to a line from uh, Predator that um, Shane Black said because (laughs) he was cast in the movie Predator because they thought, if we cast him, uh, he's gonna say he's gonna rewrite the script, and he didn't rewrite the script. So, <laughs> anyway, here's "Big Pussy" by Brockhampton. Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Where's that big pussy? It's coming slowly. All right. Like, uh, you know, like most pussies. Shit. I might have to link it. It's not coming up. Maybe I just hallucinated all of this. <laughs> yeah, Rockhampton really isn't that popular. Yeah, nobody's heard of him. Um... Yeah, I think my uh, my ex-wife must have gaslighted me on this one. It's uh, there's no song called uh, "Big Pussy" by <laughs> by Brock Hampton. Why would he resort to such uh, sophomoric sense of humor? You know, he doesn't have to. He's such a big artist. <laughs> you call Brock Hampton one person. <laughs> Yeah, he's a single human being. There's no other one. <laughs> anyway, here's the song. And it's not playing it. <laughs> I'm being gassed. Where's the Mansley? Where's the giant? I linked the song and it still wouldn't play. Sausage links. Where's the giant Mansley? Where's the big pussy Mansley? Yeah. Where's the big pussy? That's what I say to myself every morning. <laughs> it's like my, it's your mantra of, uh, say that you can like what Donald Trump would say you gotta say to yourself <laughs> only way you can fuck them right in the pussy is if you uh, say over and over where's the big pussy man's lead yeah yeah well, Sometimes it sucks to suck, as Ronnie would say. He hasn't been on the podcast yet, but he will be at some point. He's my dad. <laughs> He's everyone's dad, if they're being honest with themselves. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm typing the song. It's really not coming up. Oh, okay. I don't know if you're actually trying. It's, it says there are no tracks. I guess we can't listen to the song. It is forbidden. <laughs> nope. I have really tried to bring it up like four different ways. All right, what were we talking about before? Just keep rambling. I'll, I'll try to find something. All right, well... I really think that... Uh, it's, it's funny, when you tell me to ramble, I can't actually ramble, but if you gave me something to talk about, I could probably ramble about it for, like, three days. All right, keep talking about gorillas as a, as a band. Talk about Damon Albarn. <laughs> yeah, I... I think Damon is actually a pretty cool name, to be honest. I like that name. Gorillas, yeah, I, I, I don't have much to say about that. Yeah, I feel like um, Damon is a great band leader as far as um, 
Gorillas have put out some great work, and I feel like a lot of it is largely slept on. Like, their first two albums are fantastic. Like, you can say The Fall was kind of weak because it was just, like, low-key synth tracks. Um, but I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. Yeah. I, like I was um, saying before, I mean something that's low-key might be harder to really get into that you're listening to over and over again and I think that's where something's imprinted on you music wise if you're listening to it over and over again but um, it, it is very possible and like all it really needs is just that if it's slow paced all it just really needs is that like that hook that just sounds so good and then goes along really well with the vocals. Yeah, and that album didn't really have a lot of that, in my opinion, at least. Anyway, this is um, Payday's song Boyfriend just came out. I'm a fan of hers. Uh, Let me see what you think of it. I just wonder what my boyfriend thinks of this song. He probably hated it. What did you think of the song, Billy? I think that, uh, I think my boyfriend doesn't like me. Um, I mean, I think it was. I think it was it's like something that you put in the car and I'd like be able to listen to and jam to but it's just 
you know, not really something I care about too much. I I do, at risk of sounding like a pedant, I feel like it's one of her lesser songs, but it still like conveys that whole, um, you know, like bisexual rap, uh, bisexual female rapper, um, idolectic to bring the word that I used before. Um, um, you know, it, it's, it really, uh, conveys like this very personal energy that this, uh, female rapper is bringing and it, it, it feels, it feels very personal, you know, like the content of the rap. I feel like it was GS who said like all rap, all hip hop is about, um, drugs or sex and you could argue that this is about sex, but I still feel like it's more personal than, um, like, I'm gonna fuck a bitch, I'm gonna fuck a hoe. You know, it feels more personal. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely understand that. And I, I can see that it's, it is, um, you know, I do like the idea or the, the lyrics of this. You know, how it's conveyed is one thing. I, I think there is, like, a sort of sophomoric kind of growing vibe to it. I don't know, um, but I, I, I definitely, I think it is a very personal work, and that's I'd, I'd like that. I think that there's not many things that like go into that kind of, um, that kind of place where you know you are. Uh, you're dealing with someone someone's boyfriend and then that idea of like that secret attraction to someone while you're putting up with their you know significant other it's it's something that like not just people who are in the closet are struggling with it's something that a lot of people are can struggle to with and relate to um, and I think it, I think that goes to something I was thinking about, which is how interesting like that hip hop has become such a big part of the pop landscape and how, um, you know, rapping has become such a big part of the pop landscape as well. It's, it's very interesting. Like it, it there was like. You know, there there was a, a plenty of artists that were um, well known before, uh, but it's just it's so much more prevalent now. It's more than just one or two artists. It's so many people who are all doing their own thing. They, they, like, there's plenty. There's plenty of people who are rapping about fucking sex and money and you know whatever and that's that's all fine i mean but you know there's plenty of places where you can find shit like this that's personal yeah i mean it's like uh mustaf uh used to say brooklyn sex love and money exactly Fun. and uh you know that you can rap about really anything these days you can rap about your atm machine taking too long yes i said it the wrong way you can you can rap about your uncle's daughter, which is your your cousin, by the way. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. I I do <laughs> I do do that rap a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My cousin's a fucking bitch. You know, I go wherever she hitch. You know, I go wherever she slitch. Yeah, oh, most pop of the- off queen. I'm popping off. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, this is the new remix of Teenage Dirtbag. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not even joking, it's the funny thing. to music has gotten progressively more and more uh, unhinged. 
just like the, the, how you uh, how you uh, introduced the last song we listened to was a little bit more unhinged. Now this one is just like, <laughs> where the fuck is this coming from? All right, let's listen to Teenage Dirtbag. <laughs>
third bag. How'd you feel about that remix, Billy? I think this song says something really interesting. Um, uh, you know, theming wise, um, that if you listen to Iron Maiden, you are a dirtbag. You're also a baby. <laughs> Come see the concert with me, maybe. Um, <laughs> I I mean I I like the original because it's just it's just like such a dumb like catchy song uh i didn't really notice that much different here maybe if i listened to them back to back i'd notice something but yeah this was just like listening to the song itself this was just really honestly with it was slowed down so it sounded like it was an indie rock male vocalist and some reverb was thrown in that was it yeah and this was given to us by slater a remix artist. I do think that they could have done a little bit more to uh, warrant, like, calling this a remix. I mean, when I say that, also, I'm used to remixes doing a lot more, so maybe that's coming from that expectation. Um, and I, when I do listen to um, like kind of remix kind of things I might be thinking also that I'm used to um, people who what's that one the one youtuber who um, will literally like splice songs together make a, a song that like is completely a different pace and everything are you talking about mashups yeah uh, which isn't technically a remix so I guess no, that's where the expectation that's, comes. That's uh, serious, but we haven't yet. Say it again. I said that's something we could cover on this series, but we haven't yet. Yeah, I, I know a couple good mashups that I'd be um, interested to share, but they're all on YouTube. Yeah, and I know there are probably some people who are mad already who are like, Oh, you're covering new music? Why didn't you cover the new Avril Lavigne song? Why didn't you cover the new Bear McCreary song? And it's because, fuck off, we don't give a shit. Well, I mean, uh, I'll I'll listen to the new Avril Lavigne song. Probably not right now, but eventually. Alright, let's listen to the new Avril Lavigne song right now. <laughs> okay, God. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Does it become even more unhinged? No, that that uh that one was a little bit more expected. I think uh, the other ones were more unhinged. All right, all right. I'm. Uh, I guess that means I'm gonna sober up. Yeah. How could you do that? Oh God, I gotta go back and find my vodka. Oh, Neil Ciceriga is the um, is the mashup king. Uh, I'll definitely play something of his eventually, if, like when we sure, talk about you... mashups again. All right, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um... All right, um, this is uh, Avril Lavigne's new song. This is "I'm a Mess" uh, featuring Youngblood. All right. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Is your body ready? <laughs> yeah, I just went back to Neil Cesariga, uh, one of his songs, and I saw a comment from myself that said, Whoa, Nelly. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly. That's all I wrote. <laughs> what was the song? The starting line. Okay. All right, here, here's uh, the Afro means Levine song. All right. I'm back. He was a boy. Staring at the pavement alone. Wishing I was on my way home to you. All the shops in London are closed. He was a girl. I don't know where to go from here. No, I don't know where to go from here. 
but I know I'm a mess, I'm a mess When we're not together Such a wreck, such a wreck I hope it's not forever when I see Make it any more obvious. I'm a mess, I'm a mess. It hasn't been the same since that night. I wish I said I loved you just one more time. I try to figure out how to make it right, but I don't know where to go. I'm surprised I actually have thoughts about this. All right. That was I'm a Mess by Avril Lavigne. What feelings do you have, Billy? Well, I think that this is... This sounds kind of like a fucking Disney, like, Miley Cyrus song that is just really not that interesting, that doesn't have... I mean, I, I, I... that really sounds like it takes I would expect Taylor Swift to be making this song probably like 10 years ago or 15 years ago 10 years ago this would be Taylor Swift but now she's fucking vibing yeah yeah I think that I'm really surprised that Avril Lavigne has taken this turn and I mean maybe it's to appeal to a crowd but like you know, I think that with the direction that she was going before with her other, like, work with Gator Boy and kind of other things, like, it was still poppy, but there was more of a, more of a, like, a pop punk sensation to it. Does that make sense? Let's be honest, though. It was pop punk. Pop punk is usually vapid. That was a vapid song. This is a vapid song. Okay. <laughs> you know, I I think you have a point. Um, but I I, I would I would have been hoping that she like leaned more in, into not the vapidness, but more into the actual kind of getting more unhinged. Um, I think the bridge of this song was actually not bad. Like. It's um, not a bad overall, if we're being honest. It's it's a very it's a very good song to vibe to if you're drunk. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause you're a mess, dude. Um I'm a mess. We belong together. Yeah. I mean I I, I just think that that the bridge was actually 
pretty good and i think that like that's kind of the sound i was kind of hoping for of just like because at that point it um you know sh- sh- her the lyrics just get a little darker for a second of like talking about death and like it kind of feels a little bit more obsessive over the person and it kind of goes into like that for just a second and that's kind of what i would be hoping for like i think that's a good interesting spot for this song to go to in that direction but like i said it just keeps with the whole disney pg feel and keeps going like into the uninteresting direction but i i think that she it feels weird to say this but she definitely has like potential to make a good song yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to that. Yeah, I mean, this isn't an awful, awful song. This, I'm sure people would like this. Yeah. Who just came into the Discord? Nobody. I'm trying a thing. Don't worry about it. Oh my god. Keep talking. <laughs> Okay, I don't know what to say now. I said everything to say about the song. Those are my thoughts. Uh, I'm. I keep trying to play the big pussy song, but it won't come. Oh, uh, the big pussy don't come. Yeah, and I've tried rubbing the clit. I've tried everything. <laughs> Maybe the big pussy just wasn't meant for you. Let's get a woman in here. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure they got all kinds of tricks. <laughs> but it's funny because you say that and then you see the tricks and they just they're for they kids just lick, they just lick the thing and it's like okay I could have oh, done no. that you know but you know how it is no I was making a tricks are for kids joke and then you fucking ruined it by saying you have to lick it yeah I, I made it more real you were making a 90s joke, but that's that's not funny anymore because all of the 90s kids died in the Iraq war. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Biden. <laughs> yeah. Biden was totally president at the time. <laughs> like, war. <laughs> any war. Any war. <laughs> Any war. <laughs> any war. They're all wars. We're all fucking dead because of every fucking government administration in history. Good good game. We're all fucking dead. GG. GG. Alright, let's wrap this episode up. Um, what um, overarching views do you have? Of the music we've listened to. Overall, I love Baby. Baby? Yeah. Baby. Alright. Um, Hash Brown was like biting on my arm like two minutes ago. That's cute. It was cute. And it was I love totally cat. Yeah, cats are good. Alright. I feel like, uh, yeah. I'm a mess, as uh, the lady would say. Yeah, fuck the lady. But she got uh, divorced from the lead singer of uh, Sum 41. I never did. (laughs) Damn, she should have talked about that in the song. That's more interesting. Does Sum 41 have a song to show us that uh, we can play the Sum 41 song? If you want one more song, I can give it to you. <laughs> I, I do like the idea of us revisiting like bands that have, uh, you know, um, were much more popular back then and are um, not as popular now. Like it was interesting to see the direction that Avril Lavigne has taken, even though it wasn't a direction that I would care for. I mean. I only really know her from Skater Boy, so why would I even care, to be honest? But yeah, he was a boy. 
I was a boy. What much more could I say? Did I make it any more obvious? Did yeah. you did you enjoy me singing along? Yeah, it was great. It was the hit of our time. Here, uh, can you uh play play a song for me that I would have shared? And then that's the uh, last one. All right, here is "We Are All Insane" by. No. A- How do you play something from YouTube? Wait, believe in me. I can't. Well, you fucking suck, dude. I wanted to share some. I wanted to share the Neil Cicerica song. Right, listen to this one. <laughs> okay. Was, was that AWOL Nation? That was AWOL Nation, yeah. Oh, wow. That I, I really... That was a really good song. Uh, probably uh, my favorite that we've listened to 
that was a um i really like the approach that they've taken with with that kind of song i think that it really helps to have like his high energy vocals are just so recognizable and i i love them they're really good but i think pairing that with the the chorus it was a really good choice there too yeah, I really love love his vibe. It feels like he's always trying to channel Prince. And I love that. I love that because nobody else does that. You know, everyone else is like, oh, Prince is an influence. And then, like, they just make a standard pop song, you know, with a lot of crooning and a lot of uh, um, melisma. And it's like, yeah, okay, Prince is your influence, but you don't do anything with it. But these guys really know Prince, I feel like. Yeah, there there was a lot of uh, interesting things done with this song that, uh, you know, I... I didn't really sense the Prince energy there, but I'm sure if you like played something back to back with that, like from Prince, like I, but I, I think that that was, it, it was doing its own thing too, while being an, while being inspired by other things. And that's really the, the other stuff I can say felt a little too reminiscent of things that I can like think of right off the bat but this really did feel like its own interesting entity i it was it was good my madness <laughs> well now you make it sound really bad but he didn't sound oh. like he didn't sound like a karaoke guy <laughs> i sound like a karaoke guy yeah yeah <laughs> You're at a I, karaoke bar and you're trying your best to sound like uh, the singer from AWOL Nation. You just stop cutting it. I could do a much better job if I was actually at karaoke. But I digress. Uh, this was our episode. Um, all right, you guys. Um, how did you feel about this? Uh, rate us on Spotify. Don't ba- rate us based on this. Fuck this. I, I do think. Since you didn't let me play my song, I will play it tonight. What was it? Uh, I'm the Neil Cicerega song. I I couldn't find it. What song is it? Well, I, I'll I'll play it tonight. Are Are you sure? I can yeah, play it right now. I'm playing it tonight. You haven't heard right. it anyway. All right, fine. If, yeah. if it's on this, huh? If it's is it new? No. All right then. Yeah, you can play tonight. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, all his stuff has under like under a million at least. No, that, yeah, that's fine. But for this episode, we're we're doing new stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, my bad. I didn't understand the theme. I I just thought I was listening to music and commenting on it. Yeah. Yeah. No. All right. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> all, right, all right, just uh, all right. Here's the fun thing: a track was just released by a band called Catpiss, and it's called Catpiss Rides Again. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. We won't for the sake of our sanity, but just know that it exists in your heart of hearts. Catfish rides again. It's out there. It's looking for you. <laughs> They're riding again. <laughs> God help us all. <laughs> We're all gonna be devoured by the catfish. The gods of the catfish. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> the litter box a few too many times. I had to piss, so I'm signing off. All right, signing off. I hope you guys enjoyed this horrible episode. See ya.